Hello. Good morning. I am Dr. Anil Gudi, and today I'm going to talk to you about something slightly different. It's about the morphological and the genetic assessment of recurrent miscarriages. If we go down and have a look at what this paper looked at, it looked at the cytogenetics of recurrent miscarriage and they compared it to the morphological look of the recurrent miscarriages. It was a very large study done. They saw cases of 984 first trimester miscarriages out of which 145 had recurrent pregnancy loss and 839 had non-recurrent pregnancy loss and those were the controls. Now let's look at the other basics. 15% of naturally conceived miscarriages miscarry. Now a majority occur under 12 weeks. 50% of women will experience a sporadic miscarriage. Recurrent miscarriages affect 1% of all couples and we know that a Aneuploidies, abnormal chromosomes, affect between 50 to 70 percent of all pregnancy losses. Okay, 984 women, first trimester recurrent pregnancy loss, controls were non recurrent pregnancy loss, natural as well as IVF, evidence of no fetal heart, a trans cervical embryoscopy that's having a look at the embryos and a curatage. Embryoscopic findings looked at normal development, isolated or combined external effects and disorganized embryos and karyotyping was done on all the cases. What are primary recurrent pregnancy loss? They classified primary recurrent pregnancy loss as those without three or more consecutive miscarriages without any live birth. Well, secondary was three or more consecutive pregnancy loss after a successful pregnancy. Out of the 145, 95 had primary recurrent pregnancy loss and 50 had secondary recurrent pregnancy loss. 830 pregnancy losses which were non-recurring were the controls. Now when you look at the results, and they are quite interesting, when you look at the primary recurrent pregnancy loss had a slightly lower rate of aneuploidy. Secondary recurrent pregnancy loss had similar amount of abnormality. So when you looked at aneuploidies in primary recurrent pregnancy loss, it was about 56.4%. In secondary recurrent pregnancy loss, aneuploidies were 81.3% and in the controls was 72.3%. The morphology on assessment was very similar for recurrent pregnancy loss and non-recurrent. And it also seems that recurrent pregnancy loss primary had morphologically slightly more normal looking embryos. Now, what does this paper tell us? This paper tells us one is that aneuploidies do form a large part of the miscarriages that occur. Yes, euploid embryos also miscarry and euploid pregnancies also miscarry and that could be to various factors and the factors could be uterine, thrombophilia, infection or immune and endocrine. But we also look at all the various treatments to prevent recurrent miscarriage. Progesteron, it doesn't work. Heparin, IVIG, steroids, TNF alpha antagonist. Again, there is no evidence that these work in preventing recurrent miscarriage. Yes, there's an element of, of using pre-genetic screening of embryos to find out the cause and to rule out abnormal embryos, but its evidence also varies. Patient selection may vary. And also, if you look at this study, it was secondary recurrent pregnancy loss, which may benefit. 
Now, if somebody has a primary pregnancy loss, our first step should again be to do the conventional investigations for recurrent pregnancy losses. This is quite an interesting paper because I think it looked at how and what rather what causes abnormal pregnancy losses, what causes recurrent pregnancy losses, and it again seems to range between 50 and 80 percent to where genetics do cause recurrent pregnancy losses. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Goody. I am a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery and assisted conception. As you all know that Fertility Courses is a free online Facebook page which aims to give knowledge by discussing cases, by discussing reviewing articles and by trying to spread as much knowledge as possible. I do see a lot of queries coming in and I would request you that if you wish to get your queries answered, if you could drop an email on fertilitycourses at gmail.com with a detailed history, I'll be more than happy to, with my team to answer it on a Thursday when I'm on, uh, in the hospital doing uh, a review session of our cases. On the if you want any review cases discussed or articles discussed, I'll be more than happy to see it. I would be extremely grateful if you could rate this page and share it because knowledge at the end should be shared with as many people as possible. This will improve the quality of medicine we provide to our patients. Thank you and I hope you continue to enjoy the teaching on fertility courses.